Here is the 2024 Hyundai Kona Limited in yellow over black. This is all wheel drive, so it's going to change the suspension. When you go inline and limited, it changes the engine configuration, so it's a little bit more sporty compared to the SE and the SEL. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and I'm gonna go over some pros and cons. The problem that I have with the refresh Kona and the rivals, the limited, we'll get the full integrated LED light bar that goes across the top portion of the fascia. Projected LED headlights, front parking sensors, and a 360 degree reverse camera with 3D view. It's the only trim that tacks that on. And the front fascia will emphasize the H style with the flared out fenders and the matte black. Standard wheel setup is a 17 inch going to an 18 inch for the SEL. The inline gets 19 inch that's unique to the trim and these are also 19 inch five spoke alloy wheels. Going to the inline and the limited is gonna change out the 2.0 liter. So now you're gonna increase 43 horsepower and 63 pound feet of torque out of the 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder producing 190 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque paired to an eight speed automatic transmission, achieving 24 MPGs for the city, 29 MPGs for the highway, because this is the all wheel drive that also changes out the suspension, which the front wheel drive will have a torsum rear beam. Now we're getting a multi-link suspension and both of the front will have the McPherson strut front suspension. When you're comparing this against Honda, Toyota, and Mazda, this is gonna be better than the Mazda, dynamically speaking, because they now have a torsum beam. Honda and Toyota have the same setup and configuration for the suspension. The satin aluminum under the window trim on the front door panel, it's gonna wrap around the lower roof spoiler with a gloss black shark fin antenna, matte black for the roof rail, standard LED taillights, and the center bar is also LED. The inline will get the exhaust outlets and the lower roof spoiler will look the most dynamic here. You're gonna get the satin aluminum that bulges out with the reverse parking sensors going against the rivals, like the new Chevy Trax. It's gonna be sporty, but I feel like this has a little bit more of a sport essence to it. It's also a little bit faster and it's a four cylinder turbocharged instead of a three cylinder turbocharged engine. As for Honda and Toyota, this is going to be able to conquer a little bit more, just as much cargo capacity. And yet this is smaller than the Honda, but a little bit bigger than the Toyota. Power lift gate going into 25.5 cubic feet. It does sit a little low. It doesn't necessarily have too much of a lip, so it's easy access. LED interior lights with bag holders. Underneath the floor gets a spare tire, and you can also lower this about three inches so you can get more top to bottom. To move the privacy cover, pretty simple. Couple of clips, pop it out. To increase to 63.7, I'm kind of tall, so I can do it in the back. It folds down flat. Otherwise you'll have to go to the back doors. And it is a wide opening similar to a hatchback. <laughs> 10 way power seat adjustment, H tech seats, heated, ventilated. You get the pattern. When you go into the inline that unlocks power seat adjustment and it will have an Alcantara and a more sporty bolstering, the SEL with convenience can add the power seat and the heated front seats. Headroom and leg room. The SEL with convenience will add pretty much every feature that you're getting with the Limited. So this is a sweet spot when you tack that on, but the Limited gives it to you standard. So the eight speakers through Bose, auto dimming rear view mirror is only on the Limited trim with the home link, moon roof, we get a storage, in between the dash, the curve one panel with two screens, 12.3 with navigation. The SEL with convenience can add that. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, it is wired. Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. Throw it into reverse. The Limited is the only trim that can get the 360 degree reverse camera trajectory for the front and the rear, and you get the 3D view, which you can go all around the vehicle. And you can also change different angles of the camera. Dual climate control settings, wireless charging pad comes on the SEL with convenience. Push this and you get a 12 volt with two USB ports. All the switches for your ventilated heated seats and heated steering wheel in the driver mode on the 12.3 digital reader that has normal sport snow. 
You can also go through an array of information for the driver, including turn-by-turn -turn navigation. And if you use your indicators, you can see the cameras in the gauge cluster. Heated steering wheel multi-function with the paddle shifts, the stocks, and the gear lever is now on the steering column. And the air vents will have the satin aluminum that brush through it. I like this two level that they've done because they really have carved out maximum cargo capacity for the front, especially here in the center. Here's the key fob. Without cup holders and with them. This also opens up even more here and you have a little storage tray here. You could take it out and then you'll have a taller storage pocket right into there. The door panel and the dashboard configure in together and it just brushes in giving a more sporty feel. One touch up and down for the front windows. It's gonna be more firm materials everywhere with a long storage pocket and a beverage holder carved out. Headroom and leg room. You have quite a bit for a smaller vehicle. A storage deck behind the passenger seat, USB ports, you can add that with the convenience package on the SEL. Air vents is standard, cup holders with an armrest, and the door is going to have the same segment that's found in the front. So pretty much everyday materials, easier to clean, one cup or bottle holder. Sliding to the center, the floor isn't flat, the rails are pushed up enough. So you will share a touch of feet space, knee, leg, butt, shoulder space, it's actually not a problem. But sitting this way, Kind of has a harder bolster in the center, headroom's a little, and you can also recline these seats back a little bit more so. 190 horsepower. Well, let's face it, it's not a race car, but 195 pound-feet of torque, it is a lot more than the SE and the SEL because of the 1.6 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. And when I'm thinking about rivals like the Chevy Trax or even going into Buick, they're using a turbocharged three-cylinder, which everybody dislikes. You're not gonna have that problem here. Or you can just get the SE and SEL and get the 2.0 liter four-cylinder. And going against Honda and Toyota, no CVT. This is an eight-speed automatic transmission. That's gonna take me to some pros and cons. And the pros have to be the value that you're getting. This is a mid 30 grand vehicle, and you're getting a lot more value than pretty much all the competition. Turn radius. It's actually pretty tight because it's a small car, about two lanes. Let's hear that engine. Dual climate control settings, 360 degree reverse camera with 3D view. You're not getting that at all with Honda. Just as big as a Corolla Cross, but it has more capabilities. It does sit a little bit lower. It's not as much ground clearance, but interior, you have a lot more storage capacity throughout, especially for the front. The back, you do lose a little bit, but you're still able to fit three occupants at six foot three. Decent MPGs, it's a little bit more noisy than Mazda, but as for Honda and Toyota, this is going to outclass it. The cons start off is there really isn't any armrest. It's more like an elbow rest. The SEL with convenience can almost get all the features that you get with this, except you're not getting the engine, you're not going to get the 360 degree reverse camera and the full light bar across the front fascia. In the inline, you can't even option the 360 degree reverse camera or the auto dimming rear view mirror with the home link plus the light bar. It drives smooth, the seats are comfortable. I'm not a huge fan of where they put the gear lever on the steering column, which they're doing that with all of their Hyundai line when they get the refresh. But because this is a little bit more small and I'm a little bit more tall, I kind of hit it with my knee a little bit more so. But where this becomes a shortfall is the driving dynamic is not as good as the prior gen, the price has increased, which is a big problem for me, but you do get a little bit more amenities in the interior, but then a lot of the amenities that you can get can be unlocked on the SEL with convenience package, so you could get quite a bit of savings, and that's where the big problem really lies in. Why would you want to option a limited trim when you can go to the SEL and add the convenience package? You'll save the money, and because it's so small, I mean, I can live without the 360 degree reverse camera. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Gettle Hyundai of Lakewood for giving us this 2024 Hyundai Kona Limited for our car review.